Welcome uh, to a very special stream today. First off, we have a package. It's got my info on there, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show that. But uh, it's a package from Kerwit. Uh, you guys are all familiar with Kerwit, I'm sure. The uh, uh, the Buck Man, we'll say, Mister uh, One One Package Buck, so to speak. And uh, he sent me this package from Japan, and it's from Tokyo, which is pretty amazing. And it got here in three days. Which is extremely impressive. I have no idea how much that costs to get here from Tokyo to Florida in three days. However, he sent me a package full of uh, Japanese gifts and candies and things. And we're going to try these bad boys out here. Because that's what you do. I just have to figure out how to open this box. Because it doesn't... It doesn't have the... the oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, this is like a nice box, too. Hopefully you guys are... Look at this thing. Look at this beauty. This, this package also weighs uh, 3,465 grams, I believe. Is that how grams work? I don't know. I don't know. But either way, it's 7.6 um, pounds. So let me see if I can... Well, that doesn't work. I wish I had a bigger thing for that. I don't think there's a way me, I can efficiently... Yeah, okay, hold on. Let me see if I can find a way to full screen it without... Uh, here, hold this. Okay. All right, let's see if we can go to a green screen time now, just so you guys know. Do do do. Okay, well, I'm going to move this over. Yeah, that's better. All right, so here we go. Whoa. Nope, other way. Lots of things in here. I, I presume there's lots of things in here. That's my estimation. Because it's eight pounds, so you know, seems seems like one of those obvious things. But I have a knife, but it's not on me. It's on my jeans, and I don't have. Also, the AC in the house is not working for like the fourth time in this month, so we're gonna have to. We called the. We're, we're hoping that maintenance can take care of that. It's just a baby, no candy, an eight pound buck. One eight pound buck. Unfortunately, Kerwin can't be here, but he will be checking the YouTube video, I'm sure. Microphone out of the way, microphone down again. Alright, hopefully you guys can. Wow, this is a sizable. <laughs> My god. Jesus. Wow. We got some Kit Kats here. Uh, I don't know what flavor this is, but it's... Uh, Probably fish and shrimp. Let's <laughs> no, he actually asked me. So Kerwin knows I don't eat a ton of meat. So he actually asked me, he's like, hey, would you mind if there are meat flavored things in here? Uh, and I said, no, not really, as long as they're not made with real meat. Because that's kind of weird. Like, I don't want any meat kind of candies that have real, like, fish parts in them. or That this just seems weird to me. So... Um, God, I wish I knew what flavor this was. It looks like almost it looks like almost red bean, which is I know is a popular thing. Um, so we got these cute Kit Kats here. That's pretty cute. Uh, I don't know if I should open each of these and try them on stream, but there is a lot. Oh, here's some chestnut, some chestnut Kit Kats. This thing is unbelievably filled. I can't actually understand. I'm, I'm trying to comprehend this. Looks like there's a bunch of drinks in here, too. Got some pretzes. Some coriander pretzes. Uh, for those who don't know, coriander is uh, the same thing as cilantro. So these are cilantro pretzes, which is very, very interesting. That is very interesting. Yeah, that's funny. I also don't know why like, cilantro has two names, but I'm sure someone in the chat can... Uh... <laughs> oh, just amazing. I don't know what these are. I guess these are bakes. I have no idea what that is, but they're little, they're, they're very cute. And it also says 15th anniversary. So happy anniversary bakes. Bakes. I have no idea. A lot, a lot of things. This box is overwhelming. I want to be honest with you. This is an overwhelming box. Strawberry this looks like, catch. oh, it, it's 
So I don't know what these are. These are more Kit Kats, but they have pictures of raspberries and almonds and more raspberries. And there's like a cranberry maybe. So maybe this is like a berry almond Kit Kat. That would be my guess. Hmm, not bad, not bad. Bake. Bake. They're clearly plateau flavored. That's not a real plateau, just to be clear. It's not a fake plateau either, though. Got some crunchies. Boy, they really don't... They really don't... Uh, no, crunkies. These are crunkies. Hmm. Crunky. Crunk. And there's a strawberry and a little... It looks like chocolate, so this is probably a strawberry candy. <laughs> this is death mix and it says no death no life so that's cool on the bottom it says death hot and spicy this is amazing actually death hot and spicy what do you think about these man i bet they're flavored very sweetly yeah that sounds like a sweet candy dude kerwin you have gone above and beyond with this box it is unbelievable here's some more chestnut kit kats we've seen these guys already but i figured it'd be another look Okay, okay, so we, now we have some, wow, this is like, we have like plastic bagged drinks, but also the bags are Hello Kitty Ziploc bags, so fantastic, save those everybody bag wins. Boys. Uh, right now we have a Manau, a Manau Schweppes, I like to call it Schweppes because that's funnier, a little Schweppes, a little sparkling Manau, okay, okay. These actually, I'm excited about all of this. Okay, we got some mango pocky. Mango pockies. Keep in mind, this is an eight pound box. So, I don't even think we're halfway done. We might have to do a second stream where we actually try all of this. Because this is a lot. I don't know what this is. This just says Squex. Oh, a Square Enix. Oh. Oh, we have a, a Square Enix on the back. That, that tempts me. That's a... And uh, I wonder if this is actually a toy. I'm kind of tempted to open this guy right now, just to see. Where did my knife go, otherwise known as my nail clipper that has a file on the end of it, which I use to cut into things. A.K.A. Okay, you ready? I don't know what we're opening here. Oh, this is hilarious. They're little popsicle trays. <laughs> so you fill these dudes with like a liquid of some sort, like a juice, and then you freeze like them. Water. Yeah, like water, sure. If you want a water popsicle. Those are my favorite. I <laughs> Actually, that's that's not even a lie. They are actually his favorite. That's amazing. All, this things I, all these things I didn't need. What do you think of the Jerry Thompson produce? We will talk about that momentarily, actually. Right now, we're opening candies. I do have words, though. Macadamia... Macadamia caramelizer. Those look choice, boy. <laughs> How can you... Can you tell by the... If it has a smaller package and you know there's fewer of them in there, do you think that's a better... Do you think that's a better quality? Do you think that's indicative of higher quality? Not necessarily. I just... The picture made them look quality to me. Okay. Okay. There's no actual way I can actually pack this back in the bag... As efficiently at the box as he did. I'm just probably just going to toss it all back in there. Here's a Snickers Oats. Which I have never seen as an American citizen. However, all of the text is in English. There is nothing indicative of it being... Oh, never mind. I, I spoke too soon. Oh, interesting. This is not Japanese, though. This is like... I actually don't know what language this is. Russian? No, it's not Russian. It's not Cyrillic. It looks more... I don't know. It's it's definitely Eastern. I'm familiar with I'm familiar I've seen it before, obviously, I just don't know what it would be categorized as. Uh KO. I don't know what these guys are. But looking looking interesting. There's a little comic on the back, like you do. I don't yeah, the tie is definitely what I was thinking. That was what I was leaning towards, but... Oh, a little a Dragon Quest Rivals. I don't know what this is either, but it, it does fall under the, the toy section, I think. Again, I want to open this just because it's not food and I don't have to consume it here on stream. Oh, interesting. Ooh. 
Oh, it looks like something cute. It looks like it looks like a little keychain, but also a little stand. So you can either put it on your keychain or you can stand it up. Your choice. Man. Kurt went above and beyond here. This is unbelievable. How do you pick out this much stuff? Like, he's on vacation, I believe. So it's like, it's amazing that he would pick out all this stuff and send it my way. For literally, just to support the stream and because and, he's cool. Macadamia, more of these bad boys. So now, now you can try these because because we got a, we got a ton. Otherwise, I was going to eat them all and you couldn't have any. But now that I have two, you get to try yeah, them. So up. Congratulations. <gasps> oh, authentic, authentic from, from their homeland. Hi, chews. That's exciting. Is this a lemon? Is this lemon haichu? I guess so. Is that a lemon haichu? And then we have watermelon haichu. My favorite. How can that be your favorite? I don't think these are sold in America. Orange haichu. Oh, these are gas. My other favorite. These are gas. Sounds like you had a few strong zeros and bought out a... I don't know what strong zero is. Is that a, is that a, is that a meme? Hey, now we got some nuts. How do you, how do you feel about these nuts? Okay, just checking. Just checking. I don't know what this is, but it looks like a Kit Kat. It looks like a Thai Kit Kat. <laughs> I, okay, here's a big, here's a big one. French toast cookie. Okay, that's interesting. This packaging also feels like wrapping paper. Like, I almost want to take it off. Like, it has a real wrapping paper feel to it. I don't know if you guys can can see that. You can't. Maybe you can. I don't know. Either way, French toast cookies. All right. I'm really excited to try these. But I think the first, I think the first video has to be just, uh, <laughs> just unboxing all of this. The only, the only text I can read on here is Maron. Again, looks like hazelnuts. Is that a hazelnut? Chestnut? What's the difference between a chestnut and a hazelnut? Any legume, uh, any legume experts out there that can tell us? I can't. I don't know. You're probably gonna Google it and then tell it and pass it off as if it's your, as if it's your own knowledge. You like to, you like to ligma? I, what's what's? Hey, what's Quacker Two Thousand? What's ligma? <laughs> ligma nuts? <laughs> can't. Oh God. Anyway, I'm gonna put that down here. A lot of it looks like Pocky. It looks like Pocky, but it looks like pir pirulines combined with Pocky. It's a it's a combination. This is so many things. Some more crunky. Um, I this is cr this is crunky, and it says crunch chocolate, which uh, gives me a better idea of what I'm eating. You got that crunch chocolate. I do like that crunch chocolate. I bet you do. Here's some more crunky crunch chocolate. This is so much stuff. It's unbelievable. Nuss to the tongue. Critical. Oh, here's another Here's another soda in another Hello Kitty bag. I like that he put these in bags, like in case anything happened to them. Um, they wouldn't leak. Like, it's super just... I, if, 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 if Kermit was an online seller that I was buying something from, I would 100% buy again. One is a nut. The other is a Nuss. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. This is Red Bull Extra. Again, text looks to be Thai. It's got some B12 in there, because that's what you're looking for when you when you're Red Bull. I'm gonna put all this stuff in front of Mike and then he can sort it Consume. out. Consume. No, I don't let's let's slow down. Ooh. Ooh. He got some Tokyo Apple Butter Financier. I don't know, uh come on. Zoom in. Focus. Can can I can your boy get a little focus here? No? There. Oh, we almost had it. We almost had it. Either way, it says Tokyo Baked Base. I don't... It's all. It all sounds amazing. It all sounds incredible. And we're almost done. We're almost done. How long has this taken so far? 15 minutes? Wow. Oh, here is a re Pepsi refresh shot. I have no idea what that implies. Perhaps it implies... Caf uh, coffee, maybe? It doesn't give me a coffee impression. But look at these tiny little cups. I wish I knew how many ounces this was, but uh, for one thing, they're not going to use ounces in Japan, and for two, it's in Japanese. So uh, there's ac actually no way I would know. What was that noise? I don't know. Sound like a screen door. Anyway, 
Here's the last. Here's not the last one actually. Suntory. It looks like strawberry soda. That's probably Mike's jam. Suntory time. <laughs> that's yeah. That's actually funny. That's exactly what I think. I imagine it's the same company. Only I imagine it's non-alcoholic, right? There's only one way to find out. Wow, that's a good point. I guess I don't think he could ship it if it was alcohol, could he? I don't know. I don't think you could ship alcohol. Uh, the nice thing is that once the diabetes takes your legs, we won't be able to. T- Wow. Yeah, this can is great. This is a nice presentation. I would buy this based on the can alone. The can alone. Uh, also, we can get two cups and just try out all these drinks, too. So, I'm definitely going to do that after this box is out of the way and after we can... Uh... Oh, here's Coca-Cola Plus Coffee. So, this is obviously the coffee Coca-Cola. And it literally says Plus Coffee on the top. And it's got some coffee beans on there as well, as you can as you can ascertain from the, the visual image I'm giving you on the on the screen and we're down to like the last couple things oh hold on i didn't see these mentos oh fresh cola flavored mentos this is a thing uh and on the top it says chewy draggies i don't know if you could see that whoop no maybe no okay anyway it says chewy draggies on the top and i have no idea what that means i love chewy draggies i know you do i know you do and we got this guy slime cooking encyclopedia another dragon quest thing i don't know what it is but it's pretty cute and uh, i assume i can use it for things it's from the slime kitchen it's actually pretty adorable japanese things are generally pretty cute though Japanese have cornered the market on cute things. As you can tell from all these Hello Kitty bags that were provided. Pilot Eater, thank you for the resub. And Knight of Sticks, thank you for the resub. What, no pumpkin flavored Kit Kats? Tis the season. Is the season the same in Japan though? I actually don't know. Here's a dessert thing from Square Enix. I don't know what this is. And then on the back it has a little, it says menu. All of it's amazing. And I can't read it, so I have to figure out what it is myself. But that's the end of the box. And there's a lot of things in here, and I'm very impressed and humbled. This is amazing. This is the biggest package I've ever received with the most things I've ever seen from a different country, from multiple different countries. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, I'm definitely... um, We should schedule a time next week to, to dig into all this. How do you feel about that? Sounds all right. I mean, there's a lot to go through, so it's probably going to... I didn't realize it would be this much, otherwise I'd just do it now. Um, But I feel like it should have its own its own thing, right? It should have its own stream time. Because it's a lot. I mean, it's taking me... It's going to take an extra five minutes to uh, to just put it back in the in the box. Kerwit, if you, if you watch this, which I'm sure you will... Thank you so much, dude. Whoa. This is, like, the most generous, thoughtful thing I've ever... Like, it's unbelievable to me. Because you could have sent me, like, four things, right? This is a whole box full of, like, five different drinks, multiple boxes of things. Like, it's... uh, This is... This has to be, like, $100 worth of... At least $100 worth of stuff, right? This is an insane amount of Japanese goods and uh, kind of awesome pretty awesome so um, I'm going to put this on the ground and uh, let's see if we can go back to uh, to the old uh, to the old man an incredible incredible amount of of things Wow. I am impressed. I am, uh, I want to say impressed, but like, it's more humbled, right? Because it's like, it's very thoughtful. It's a very thoughtful gift. Put it on the ground, huh? (laughs) Oh, he's actually a little scared because it just started thundering, so. Anyway, Kerwit, thank you so much, man. Um, hopefully we can get a chance, not even hopefully, we'll definitely get a chance to eat this, uh, sometime in the near future, so I will keep you updated. And uh, if you aren't able to catch the live stream when it happens, I will definitely send you a link to the video where we consume a portion of all of this delicious snackitude and drinkitude. Because that is 
just it's so insanely thoughtful. Like you're in Tokyo, right? Or you're in Thailand or wherever, like wherever part of the world you are, that's on the, the, the Eastern hemisphere. And you're picking out all these little things and making this package, like probably over time too. Not even just like in one day, you didn't just go to, even if you do it in one day, you're probably going to like five, six, ten stores and just like putting it all in a package and mailing it to me while you're on vacation in another country. Like that's crazy. The amount of thoughtfulness and effort there is just, un- it's just unbelievable. Um, super grateful. Super grateful. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Right. Okay. Listen, don't, you can't, no. Anyway. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do it. I don't know if you guys could tell Mike was flipping cards. And I'm like, this is gonna, this is gonna be ice chewing all over again. Nature's a little treasure. Six months in a row. Thank you so much, man. Crunky Draggy Stream Hype. It was G-R-A-G-E-E, unfortunately. So, get wrecked. Anyway, we do have a stipulation today. The stipulation is... We have to pick cards alphabetically. It is by Casper Dix um, from France. And uh, messaged me and said, hey, I would love for you to do this stipulation. It has to be alphabetical. The picks have to be alphabetical. And... um, we can so it doesn't have to be alphabetical in the sense of like if we take a C we have to next take a D. Um, if we take a consecrated sphinx we could then take something like, uh, or rather if we took a chainer's edict we could then take consecrated sphinx because it does follow alphabetically. So uh, I, I'm pretty sure we can start with whatever we want. I don't think there's any requirement to start with A. Uh, at least that was not that was not mentioned. And we also have five outs per pack, which is a lot. So I'm probably going to stick to closer to three or four. Uh, because five outs per pack is 15 cards total, which is almost the entire deck. So I think we're going to go for fewer. Oh, Casper, what's going on, buddy? I'm glad you could make it. Casper, let me know. Actually, we have 35 seconds. Let me know if you want me to start with A, because I could just take the acidic slime. Or if you don't care what we start with, so long as we go alphabetically from that. I'll highlight the acidic slime, because I also don't think it's terrible. Uh, and the alphabet definitely loops, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to take anything. Also, the, you know, the, the thing is, like, the outs are very, very nice. What do we take if we don't take Acidic Slime, though? I don't even think this pack is that great. I'd probably just take Zealous Conscripts. You can start from letter your choice. Okay. So I can take Zealous, but then I just have to take an A card. I think it's actually Zealous, right? Probably. I think it was probably the best card. Now we have to take A. Uh, so it's got to be Abrupt Decay, unless we want to use an out. Yeah, I'm fine with taking Abrupt Decay. Jund it is. That is correct, right? All right. Unless there's another Z card that comes after Zealous Conscripts, which I have my doubts. All right, Abrupt Decay. Bitter Blossom could be good if that is the pick. Oh, it looks like it is. That's pretty okay. good. That's pretty good. All right, all right. So Bitter Blossom. <clears throat> easy, easy game, easy life. Cold Steel Heart could be good. Is that the pick? Oh, Char is, Char is sooner. Cast Out is even sooner. So bitter blossom, no bees, right? Uh, it looks like it's it's cast out over char or cold steel heart. Well, that one's a little awkward, but whatever. Hmm. We could use an out to take like Inferno Titan or Shieldred. True. Unless then you know if we want a white card. That's true. If you get the two one record, I can think of sending a box. What? That would be insane. Oh man, now I really want to go two one. All right, what did you say though? And I don't think we really want to cast out. I don't think we do either. So I'm going to use this. Um, I think we just take Inferno Titan. I think it's probably the best. Yeah. However, if we don't play Zealous, we can play Shouldered. I think it's Shouldered. Okay, so the last pick was Bitter Blossom. Uh, so, Gifted Aetherborn? Oh, Duress? Duress is actually okay. I can, I can, I can take a Duress. Oh, no, it'd be Brightling, wouldn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. Ooh. Interesting. So, I mean, this leaves us open to Abzan or to, uh, to Jund and just not play this. Or we cannot play Green and be Mardu. So, I actually think that's fine. If you use an out, you go back to the previous letter, not the letter of the out. So, I think it's 
Yeah, I think that's fine. Hmm. I also do think a lot of routes should be used on lands. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, so Brightling, we would have... Nature's Lore? Oh, no, Cloud Goat Ranger. Yeah. I, th I think that's fine. If either one of these three come back, I'd be okay with it. White, white Green is playable for us. Arid Mesa is great. I also don't like Double White, but maybe we're Heavy White now. So close, so close. Ooh, oh, it puts, I hope it's Dragon Lord Jamoka here. Oh, it is. That's pretty good. Okay, so I think we can definitely... We can put Conscripts over here, which is funny because that was our first pick. And every other pick has been... And, like, it looks like we can be Abzanish. It's got to be Dr it's Jamoka, right? I just want to yeah. make sure. Okay, cool. All right, ABC, e, F. Oh, I hope it's Ice... Oh, it'd be Isamaru over Isolated Chapel. Oh, it'd be Incendiary Flow over, over those two, actually. You take it out here. Let me see the EFG. It's, well, it, okay, it would actually be gifts. Gifts would be the pick here. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna use an out on isolated chapel. So that is two outs for this pack. Okay, okay, that's good. That's good. I already have tested the simulation. In my opinion, don't t don't hesitate to hear outs early for fixing. That's actually helpful. That's good to know. Um, so the last pick was Dromoka. So he's D D E F. F, so we fight with fire. I'm going to use three, number three, for fixing. Yep. This is actually working out pretty well, though. I think our deck looks good so far. And we have two fixing lands, so... I am okay with that. Heavy White is my mom's nickname. Wow. <laughs> Pepe the Frog, sad face. Oh, I actually shuddered. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so we've had... This is three outs so far. We've used for Isolated Woodland and... and uh, Shielded. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this would be four. Otherwise, we take what? Uh, I think Exhume, because Dragon Lord Jamoka was still the last one. Yeah, I'm okay with using it now. Yeah, I think we're just taking lands with the outs, which is great. Uh, oh, Hero's Downfall would be... F oh, but it's going to be Falconrath Gorger. Hmm. I'm going to use it for Hero's Downfall, I think. Okay. Let me see D e, F G. Yeah. Okay. So that's all five of them. That's five for pack one. Actually, now we get the. Oh no! It's dread return. That's actually funny because the cast out came back, but now we get to take the dread return. I don't actually mind dread return that much. Yeah, it's fine. Mm, here. Uh. So what do we took? We took dread return. So now we get the duress. All right. And torch fiend. I could see playing dread return and duress. I I could as well. We could actually play Cloud Guard Ranger, use the three Kithkin to flashback Dread Return. That's actually kind of cool. Well, well, at least if it rains, it cools down things because the AC, like I mentioned earlier, the AC is not working again today, which is like the fourth or fifth time this has happened. Okay, so the last card we had was what? Duress? Mm -hmm. So actually... um. Casper, let me know if the last pick counts or if we go from the last deliberate pick, right? Like, so the last deliberate pick was Dread Return. And then we got a Ravages of War. So let me know if the next card has to follow Dread Return or Ravages of War. Actually, no, no, no. That has... Dress. Be, Torch Fiend was actually the last one because we took it after Arcane Artisan. So I'm not sure where to pick up off. That's the only question I have right now. You said no. So if it's Ravages, it looks like it would be Seagate Oracle, maybe. Which might call for a... Oh, start from zero each pack. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. So I get to pick any... So do I get to pick my pick what I want? Or start from A? If I pick what I want, I'm just going to take the Verdant Catacombs. That feels right. What do you think about that? Seems pretty dang good. Pretty dang good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight it just to make sure. In case, uh, in case there's any confirmation. Okay, so Verdant, we go to Wretched Confluence is pretty good. I'm okay with that. I hope the Scrubland comes back. Pick one is important. Let's make this. Okay, I like that actually, because I think one of the most important things for stipulations is to make sure you have a, like a playable deck. And, 
Do we go wretched or do we just do we do we take the scrub land, you think? Scrub land's pretty good with the Verdant Catacombs. I agree. But wretched is like a nice pick in the order, right? Like mm -hmm. I want to take the Wretched Confluence. I think it's fine. Do we seriously get a Vindicate? Oh, wow. That's really nice. See, I got... I did. I wanted to save the outs because... So wretched, why do we get a Vindicate? Because this comes after Wretched Confluence, right? It's a W, right? Right. So what's the next, what's the next alphabetical after Wretched Confluence in this pack? X would be the next one. Is there an X card in here? No. So, right. So, we're Vindicate is the next... Oh, it comes before Wretched. Never mind. Yeah. Oh, my God. I totally messed up. I don't know how words work. Oh, that's so sad. We don't get a Vindicate. What would be the next word, then? Just, like, A? X, Y, Z, A. So, Johnny Vengeance? Yeah, I guess we're going to take an out here for... Or we can take Sun's Champion. Sun's Champion's pretty good. Is it better than Vindicate? Hmm. I don't know how. Yeah, I got I got my sure. X and my W confused. I'll take an Elspeth. That will be one. Let me put it on the sideboard, man. I don't know. Because that was an out, so I wanted to like denote it somehow, but that I don't think that works. Yeah, I so like me personally for some reason I've always had to say the alphabet. Like if I'm like if I'm like sorting cards, I'm like okay X Y G, okay. A E F G H I. Okay, I. I always have to like go over to my head. It's for some reason I've never been able to just like. Anyway, the last card, the last pick was Wretched Confluence. So W X Y Z A Arc Trail. That's rough. That's rough. We could take a courtyard here. We could take a courtyard. See, this is why I wanted to save the outs because there's situations like this where you're just like, "Oh, all right, we'll take we'll take that." Okay, so we're still on W. We're still on Wretched Confluence. Oh, it still looks bad. Clifftop Retreat. Oh, we're not red. <laughs> I got excited, but we would, it would be Botanical Sanctum before that, and then we build Garden Hellkite before that. So, man, I think we just have to suck it up and take a card here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just have to take Hellkite. Yeah, it's just going to be Hellkite, I think. Or we can take an O-Ring. Or a Lyra. I was never... See, I've never been sure if most people are like that, because I don't know... You know, it's not a thing you can really pull people on. We can also cut the blue and red and be Zealous Conscripts, and... I guess we have Woodland Cemetery and Verdant Catacombs. Okay, so we have Bogard and Hellkite. Bontu's Last Reckoning is probably the pick here. Which is sad because there's two fixing lands. We have two. We've used two outs this pack. Mm -hmm. We can take a Scoos or a Quagmire if we wanted. Oh, Wretched Confluence to Courtyard. I see what you're saying. That would have been. That would have been. So wait, we took two. We took two. Uh... Yeah, yeah, we've taken two so far. Okay, we still got three left. What did so you say? We could take like Sun Pelgrove or Hissing Quagmire or Mana Confluence. I like Bontus actually. Nah, we'll go Sun Pelgrove. Sun Pelgrove is our third out. Again, it's for a land. Ooh, a Bayou? Wait. Oh, so close, so close. <sighs> the next thing would be Cord, I guess. Which is not terrible, but it's also not great. It's triple green. We don't have a lot of creatures. So here's the one problem with Bio taking... looks pretty good here. Yeah, but taking all the lands for outs is rough because then, like, we still have a, we have 11 cards. We need a lot of playables. That's true. All right, we get one more out. We get one more out. We're just hoping that it works. Okay, so what was the last card we took? Bogard and Hellkite? Mm -hmm. Please be this. Oh, please be this. Bogard. Bo I think it's Bone Shredder. Ooh. That's correct, right? Yeah. Nice. That was nice. Bone, A, B, C, G. It's got to be Glacial, right? We have one out left, and I don't think we're, we can use it for now and you just get Gearhulk or something. That's not super impressive, though. None of these cards are worth an out to me. This might be worth an out. Yeah, it's pretty good. 
What was the last card? Bone Shredder? A, mm-hmm. B... So actually the next card would be Entomb, which is interesting because we have a Dread Return. Yes. Yeah, I'm just going to take Scrubland here. So now we have no more outs, but the last card is Bone Shredder. So now we get Collective Brutality? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, Disfigure? Sure. A, B, C, D... E-G. Ah, oh, so close. If this guy was not in here, we could have taken that Lyra. And Dreadshade. These are some heavy black cards. Probably going in the sideboard. I don't foresee us playing either of these guys. Hey, that's not bad. Especially with, like, Bone Shredder or Bitter Blossom tokens. Yeah, just pay, like, nine mana. Our deck is very heavy, heavy black right now. Okay, so we get to start over again, which is nice. You took Glacial? Yeah, we had to. It was in our... Uh... Oh, he's right! We took Glacial! So we were actually way ahead. Oh, that's right! It's hard to keep track of sometimes. What do we start with here? None of these cards are great, unfortunately. Uh, I think Lily on the Veil is pretty good. Is it, though? Sure. I recommend starting at the letter of your choice. Let's say S Z eight. Oh, I like that actually. That's a good idea. You like that better than cultivate though? I feel like this is a deck that wants mana. I call see noble higher. See that? Yeah. Nah, I only task for two colors. I think cultivate's better. Two colors. All right, we're gonna take cultivate. All right, A, B, C. Are there any C's in this pack that I need to look out for? Not really. I think Dryad Greenseeker might be the next pick, and I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, the Glacial Fortress should have pushed us further ahead in the Alpha, but I actually went back to, like, Bogart and Hellkite or something, probably, just because, um, because I didn't feel like the Glacial Fortress was a deliberate choice. It was just what was next. Uh... Can't take Courser because we just took Cultivate. So this is CL, this is CO. Courser comes before Cultivate. So we just have to take Dried Green Seeker, which I'm okay with. I think this card's actually fine. <sighs> Dryad. B, C, D. E? F? Might be Fertile in Ground? Mm hmm. Or we could Audible and take a Woodfall Primus. I kind of don't mind Fertile Ground, to you, honestly. I mean, Woodfall Promise is very, very good. It's a lot of mana, though. That's true. Can't take Dark Red, because we just took Dryad. Dark Red is after Dry or before Dryad. I mean, don't forget, we have five, five, five outs here. I'd, if I was going to use an out, I'd use it on Thrag Tusk. Really? Yeah. Or Woodfall Promise? Mm-hmm. I think Woodfall Primus just has so many shenanigans going on with it that it's like. All right, we'll take this. We'll go with Fertile Ground. You see the E F. I might take Demon Lord Bells and Lock here. <laughs> is the F G F? Is there any Fs that we have to worry about? No. G go for the throat. That's also pretty good. We don't have many creatures though. Yeah, I'm gonna have seven so far. I think Demon Lord's good. I could use an out on that. Months monster, 13 months in a row. Thank you so much, buddy. That's over a year. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. You like Bells and Lock over Go for the Throat? Yeah. All right. This is our first out here. So now we're still on Fertile Ground. Let me see the F. Oh, I hope it's Gaunty. F, 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 F. I think it's Gaunty. That's it exciting. Is. All right, we're taking the Gaunty. G. G, 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 H, I, J. Wait, what? What? Am I missing something? We just took Gaunty, right? Yes, so G's. There's no G's, right? It'd be H and then I. Right, this is what I'm doing. No I's. 
Never mind. No, J- no J's. No K's. I'm really hoping this murderous cut is what we have to take, and I think it is. That's actually pretty good. I like that. All right, so M. Any M's in this pack? Malicious Affliction? No, that doesn't come after. Needle Spires would probably be the pick here. So I'm going to veto that. Take him to Torok? Yeah, it's either that or like a Drana. Drana's unexciting in our deck. Porcelain Engineer is pretty unexciting. Like him is actually, we're going to be heavy black. So I think him is actually pretty good. We also have Scrubland and Bayou, which are the two black. Uh, like you can, we can fetch both black lands. And we also have Woodland Cemetery and Isolated Chapel. All of our fixing lands are actually black, which is very, very interesting, except for Sun Petal. I'm going to take him. That is our second out for this pack. We were on Murderous Cut. Oh, so close. Nevin rolls a disc would be the pick. I'd take an out for Masker Worm here. I think Masker Worm is probably the pick here. I wish we had more ramp. We just have Fertile Grounds and Cultivate, right? Yep. We don't have any Planeswalkers. What if we did just play this? We don't have Artifacts, Creatures, and Enchantments. We have Fertile Ground, but that's pretty much it. I'm going to take the Worm. Alright, that's number three. So we get two more outs, and I don't think we'll, we might not even use them. All right, so we're still on Murderous Cut, Oblivion Stone. Yeah. Or do we just? I don't like. I don't actually like Liliana that much. We can discard something like Shoulder Red and Dread Return it, which is fine. But it's really good in certain situations. I think we can use it. We only need one more out left, so we're still on Murderous Cut. M is a priest, Precinct Captain. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like we are with nine creatures. I don't feel like we're a recurring Nightmare deck. That's correct, right? Just making sure. Yes, so we are in P. PR. Show and tell. I might just take Vampire Nighthawk here, actually. As our last. Last out. Yeah. All right. All right, so Vampire. Okay, so actually we were on Pre-Saint Captain. Do we get on Burial Rites? Wow. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Anguished Unmaking. <laughs> okay. Start over. And a, and now we get a Blood Crypt, which we're probably not going to play, but that's totally fine. And last pick, Drana. Wow, this deck turned out pretty good. I flipped you and V again. How? Wait, what did we do? Did I, did I really do it again? No, Vampire and like we took as an out. I don't know if that's what they're talking about. They might be talking about the Umbrella Rights. Yeah, Vampire and I we took as an out. Like, this is our fifth out. Yeah, we took Vampire and Nighthawk as an out, and then we went back to... Um... Precinct Captain. Yeah, we went back to Precinct Captain, and then Umbrella Rights was the next card. So that was not... This is our fifth out. Man, you guys are making me, like, question my entire existence. All right, so we need... I'll cut the duress, and we need one more cut. Probably this figure. This figure, I feel like, is super versatile, though. Actually, there's so many times where, like, against the, the tiny decks that it's actually very good. I like that we got this late Anguish on making. I also like this late Umbrella Maybe Dread Return, because we have Umbrella Rights now? Uh, I can see that. Yeah, this deck actually looks pretty good. No, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> also, our fixing is pretty good. Alright. Alright, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. We are very heavy black. But also, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of our lands tap for black. So, ten sources. And then we have one, two, three, four green sources. This is six. Go to seven. We don't actually need that much green. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight white sources. That so this is funny. Three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, eight, ten, and we still get like one more. It might just be one more black. Yeah, I'd probably put another swamp. Because we have a lot of double black. We have Heroes Downfall, Vampire Nighthawk, Him to Torok, Gaunti. And we only have literally five green cards. Yeah, this deck seems great. 
I am impressed. We also have a ton of removal, which is nice. We have too much top end. You need to go. You need to get right out of here. Also, wretched confluence is nice because it helps us get our uh, our creatures back that we don't have many of. We're also on the first three color combination alphabetically. We are on Abzan. That is a good point. Hmm. So, Casper, the, the problem with this tip not being as clear as uh, as you wish it was is like. It's really hard to account for all of the things that can come up during a stipulation, which is what I, I try to do that. I'm like, okay, what happens if this happens? What happens if this happens? Just so we can avoid things like that. So it's, you know, my fault too. But don't even worry about it. This I think this went really well. And uh, as long as you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. Because it is actually hard to account for all the problems that might come up during a stipulation. I, I don't hate this hand. Yeah, I'll keep this. We have all our colors. We have double black. We have green. We can get a bayou. I guess we're just hoping to avoid uh, Avalanche Riders and Wasteland in before they play Avalanche Riders and Wasteland. My name is Michael. And I live in a trash can. It's true, I do live in a trash can. Oh, live in that dream. He does live in a trash can, guys. Oh, all right. You too. I feel like the D face is my... Uh... Oh, the, the double white deck with no play on turn two. Or one. That's interesting. I really don't want to have to crack this because we have not hit another land yet, but... Like you do. Like you do. Ooh, a Reckoner and an Oust. Okay. They have three cards now? Did they mulligan this game? Oh, they mulligan to six. Okay. And they're on the play? Oof. Oh, God, we're so good at this game. I'm tempted to play this just so I can bone, just so I can wretched d distended mind bender it the turn after, but yeah, but then we also have to pay the echo and then wait another turn. So it's like two turns. You remember that Dave Chappelle special where they asked Oscar why he's so grudge? <laughs> Bitch, I live in a trash can. Yes, that was <laughs> that is a very that is a solid Dave Chappelle special. Oscar, you're a grouch. All right, well these lands are nice. Fayon, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. You doing okay, man? Just cracking my bones. I didn't hear any of your bones crack, but... Oh, well, I did. I think that was the chair. No, that was my bones. I think your it bones. was the chair. It was my bones. It was your bone chair. Bone chairs are ready. Now we need another white. I don't think... Well, they have two lands and they haven't played anything this game, so I don't think we actually need anything. What do they have in hand? A bunch of three plus cards and no other planes? We don't actually need another white because we can actually just draw three cards here. How do you feel about that? This seems good. Bone crackers are ready. Bone crackers ready. So I'll choose me. Oh, it's oh target player. So I can actually choose them, and I can actually drain them for three. I can just lightning bolt them. We don't even have to discard, which is pretty nice. Planes. Do we think they have? What if they have? Mana tithe. I guess they could have manatized this, right? Yeah. All right. This isn't a threat, though, so maybe they don't care. Oh, the game just ends. All right. Well, <laughs> we did it. Mo yeah, yeah. Oh, trust me, I'm quite familiar. With a sad face. Oh, I didn't. I I forgot we had this. Did you look at that? Did we take this as a as an out? Oh, and Massacre was in the sideboard too? Wow, we got a bunch of cards that I actually just threw in the sideboard. Yeah, why are we playing Massacre? You must be crazy. Over men? Yeah, I don't even know what the what's even going on. Wow. Our deck is actually better than I even thought. And that says a lot because... Well, I thought it was pretty good. We took Lily as an out because we had a couple left over. Not necessarily because she's super good. 
I actually don't think she's great in this cube. Combining the drinks here. This hand seems great. I will keep it. Hopefully Dryad Greenseeker can hit a bunch of lands like it does in Dominaria Standard, or M19 Standard. M19 Draft. Nailed it. Let's start with Old Chapel. Old Richard Chapel. Chappelle. Richard Chappelle. Isolated Chappelle. They call him Michael. He lives in the garbage can. I do. It's <laughs> I that's correct. That's a true statement. Oh, look at this little guy. Huh. I wonder if I just collected brutality of this. And we can discard on barrel rights? Not bad. And we obviously look at the hand, right? Those are the two modes. Uh, neg two, choose dos modos. Neg two, and look at your hand. Oh, Wrath of God, Supreme... <laughs> wow! <laughs> okay. Alrighty then. Wow. But they don't have a sec. They don't have a third land. All right. Well, that's interesting. Do you just take Terminus? It's the harder one for them to play, but it does put our creatures on the bottom, which is worse when we have Unbarrow rights. Yeah. Like I don't actually care about the other two. I'll take the I'll take the Wrath of God because Supreme Verdict is obviously harder for you to cast. Wow. 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 Well, now we're just cultivating. You gotta keep them cultivate. Actually, do we just brightling here? They missed a land drop. Yeah, we're just brightlinging. 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 And, and we can actually cultivate next turn and keep a white up for bounces. Oh man, two lands again. This is less than ideal, my friend. Magic's a real scumbag sometimes. So, one, two... I think we're just Gaunteeing. There's still two turns away from Wrathing here. Oh, I'll take a Gideon. Yes, please. Yes, please! Got a game on the right mm -hmm. Coalition Relic is a good. That's a good. That's a good gentleman. Now I'm just tempted to Gaunti. Or to uh, Gideon Jura, but I'd rather keep mana up for. to bounce this. Because now they can put a counter on this and just play Wrath of God next turn. Yep, like you do. Let's get a forest and a plains. Put you into play. Did I play land this turn? Yes, I did. Oh, lifelink. And then next turn we can just play Gideon Jura, which seems good. Wrath incoming. You might be correct. Well, they didn't have a blue, actually, and they have Supreme Verdict in hand, so maybe not. Maybe not. I can't imagine they play a creature in, in right now when they have two wraths in hand. Did they draw a day of judgment? A, th a wrath number number three, number four. What is going on right now? Did they add a blue with this? Oh, they should have added blue with Coalition Relic. Now they just have an extra mana floating for nothing. Yep. Bounce you to the hand. Come on back. Elspeth. Dang it. Why wasn't that an Elspeth, Michael? I don't know. I think we're in a position where we can play Green Seeker here. Green Seeker, can you seek my greens? 
Can you make them tasty? Can you make them tasty? Yeah, my greens. It's a salad. It's a salad song. It's a salad. It's a salad song. (laughs) Amazing. It is amazing. So amazing. Such an amazing salad song. I'm just going to death. I'm going to hero's death this. He had a hero's death. Goodbye. Oh, we have an umbrella rights in the graveyard? I didn't even I forgot all about that. Eh, you can stay back. So they no longer have a Supreme Verdict or Boros Reckoner. Yeah, this game is pretty rough. Salad song cause Salad Song say so much. I hope you're making Elton John reference there, because that's where I took it. Put them on. Put them on. Put those dressings on. Croutons are on. Because salad songs say so much. I think we won. Uh, I'm not. I'm going on a limb here. I feel like we're doing well. Oddly enough, I hate veggies. That is odd. Because, you know... What about the electric lettuce? That's a veggie. Elton John is amazing. All these things you're saying are factual. Uh-oh. Day of Judgment? For my green seek. Oh. Interesting. I can understand not liking some vegetables, but not like any vegetables. I just don't get... All right. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, freebie. Eh. 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 Okay, so if we attack with everything, they go to one. I knew I should have attacked with this guy last turn. Because they block a Gideon, and then they take three. But they do have to block Gideon. So I guess we do that. Very tempted at Gaunty here. And then if we hit like Vindicate or something, I'm going to feel real sad because we could have just won. But you know what? That's life. <sighs> like, even if they Terminus, they lose to Gideon. So it kind of puts them in a weird position. Oh, it's a white. All right. So we'll add a white. Unburial this boy. Eh, I'll take a history banalia. And pass. I like that most of my creatures withstand things like Supreme Verdict, Wrath of God, and Terminus because they just come back to their to their natural forms. They go back to the earth. Uh we have not discussed it yet, but I'm actually gonna make a video on the Jerry T thing. Um I, I agree with a lot of his points. I think he's he's correct and it's something that needs to be said uh, quite a long time ago, I would even say. Um, one of my main, one of the main arguments against what he's saying, the only one I can think of, um, is worth noting. Like he said, like a lot of people don't know how. Um, he said that one of the things like people didn't know about worlds, you know, like it's not it's, the magic isn't hyped up as much as it should be, like you know. The, and the problem with that is that a lot of these other games, Dota, League of Legends, Artifact, the new with the new card game that Steam is coming out with, or Valve is coming out with, um, all of these games, and I've said this before, so if you guys have heard this, um, you know, apologies for that, that you have to deal with my, my repetition here. But all of those games are bred and born on the internet. These are games that you have to be online to play. So your, your base, your audience, is already plugged in to not only your game, but to the internet in general, right? And a lot of Magic players, either because they're, you know, they're older players that started before Magic was really on the internet. They're, you know, paper players. They play at their kitchen table. They go to the local Walmart to buy packs. Um, a lot of these players, not only do they not go online uh, frequently to, you know, to, to check the latest news, they don't, they, they, they also don't have to. There's no reason to ever go on. Like, you can play Magic and never go online to, to play the game. You are completely disconnected from the internet 
through Magic the Gathering, right? Like, the game has never required you to go online in any way, shape, or form. But also, like, a lot of these players just don't care about that. Like, it, I, I know tons of players at my local FNM where they go to FNM on Friday after work. They work, like, you know, they work blue-collar jobs. They go to they go to FNM at the end of the day They they to, to relax and unwind. They go home. And then that's their, that's their magic experience for the week. They don't care about worlds. They don't care about Pro Tour coverage. They're not checking. They don't have SCG premium accounts, stuff like that. Like... Because they just, that's not, that's not an area that they need to be in, you know, in tune with in order to enjoy magic the way they do. So, like, a lot of people don't consume magic the same way as people consume League of Legends or Dota or, you know, you know, Hearthstone. Because they don't have to. They're not required to do so. When you go to log into Hearthstone, um... In order to do that, you're hooked into their client. You're hooked into the Hearthstone client. If you ever want to play Hearthstone, you have to do it. Because otherwise, we should have lived a swamp there, because then we can disfigure. Um, but, like, you have to do that, right? So, like, it's also a gateway to the news. Like, hey, let me load up Hearthstone. Okay, I have to load up Battle.net. Okay, there's a... Nope, should have... Yep, I'm getting penalized already. Um, yeah, we're just going to play this. So yeah, I you know what funny thing? I, I'm, a, I'm a professional Magic player. I get paid to play Magic. I have been making content for Magic for 10 years. Um, and I still didn't know Worlds was this weekend just because it's not on my radar. I didn't know either until I saw that post. However, if I was a Hearthstone player, if I was a professional Hearthstone player, I would know that because all of my information is online, right? In order to even engage with the Hearthstone client, in order to play the game, I have to be online. I do not have to be online to enjoy Magic the Gathering. So a lot of people aren't, you know? Um, I actually like Abrupt Decay and Disfigure here. Play Shambling Vent. What did they get? Batter Skull? Yeah, you're definitely, definitely killing this. Turn them on. I play MT Joe and still didn't know. That's a good point. But nowhere on here does it say that Worlds is coming, right? Like, nowhere. Like, here it says, what you're, whether you're looking for an event to play right now, the Magic Online calendar has you covered. Why isn't that integrated in the client? Check out MCGO for the latest Magic Online news and updates. Well, all right, that seems like it's the same thing. Legacy Key was back. All right. Core set limited PTQ. That's fine. Uh, Sunday's 28 Magic Championship Series. Sure. Nothing Nothing on here in this Magic Online client tells me worlds. And look at all this empty negative space. Can't you make these fonts bigger so that they kind of stand out? And I'm not, like, squinting to read them. But, you know, maybe not. Who knows? Oh, that's so awkward. Non artifact. Yes. Uh, let's get a white and a white. It's it's always non artifact. I'm actually gonna crack this now because if we try to crack it, like we can go block, crack it to pump. Actually, we don't have to crack it to pump. We can just pay this. But I'm still gonna crack it now because I want to scrub land, or uh, buy you, or scrub land rather. Yeah, that seems good. <clears throat> It's actually comical how many people have said they only knew about worlds from Reddit, from Reddit, from Jerry's post. That's actually pretty ridiculous. Kitchen Finkus. That might be worth exiling. They missed a land drop, so that's good. The magic tournament system has always been intimidating and labyrinthine to me. Same. I will actually agree with you. As someone who's played the game for as long as I have, I agree with you completely. Um, which is why I actually don't really enjoy... That's one reason I don't actually like and enjoy professional play. Because it's confusing. 
like there was a time where I was a silver pro and I didn't actually know. I'm like, how many points? What do I need to get gold? I have to get this by when? And like, I didn't know when it expired. I didn't know if I could play an event. Like it's, it's really confusing. It's not really documented very well anywhere. Um, I think we just attack here. They didn't miss. I thought they missed a land drop, but they didn't miss a land drop because they just played it like post kitchen finks, even though I had mana tithe mana. I guess we just attack here. I feel a double block coming on, which could be good because we can anguish on making this guy and then make it a two. Oh, dang. Thank you. Unseen Spectre, thanks so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. Um, let's give you plus one and also give you lifelink. All right, seems good. I guess we're good, right? Mm -hmm. Genuine question, do all or most card games use a similar system for tournament play? No, none at all, I don't think. I don't think... Similar system, how so? I don't think we play Bone Shredder here. I don't really like Bone Shreddering and Kitchen Finks. But I also don't like using Anguished on Making on something that isn't Batter Skull. You know what I mean? No, well, they might just play Batter Skull. <laughs> well, yeah, but then maybe I just Anguished on Making that. Kitchen Finks is more manageable on the board where Batter Skull is a real problem. When you want to ask me how many shamoy, shamoy, you need to still have your biggest construction site to go to. <laughs> oh, man. I guess we just take six here. Matthew or ice cream truck, hashtag ice cream truck problems. Yeah, every that's that's another problem. There are const there are several competing systems in place: Grand Prix, Worlds, Pro Tour, Pro Points, and the pools do constantly change, or the, not the pools, but the uh, the rules. The rules constantly change. Like every year, there's a different reward for this, or there's a different qualification method for this, or a different number of people are qualified, and it's actually kind of it's kind of ridiculous. I feel like this guy's got to get killed now. Can we draw a card that's not a land? No. Clearly. This is actually surprisingly good against our uh against our Brightling. We could just anguish to making this guy, I guess, and then pump this and our blocks are good all of a sudden. I don't know. I don't know, man. I just work here. I think you don't. But, like, then what do we do? Just block? I don't want to block a kitchen, Finks. <laughs> I don't want to block I don't wanna block either of these guys. I think blotching... Blotching. Blocking the kitchen, Finks, is fine. Is... What, what format is Worlds? Probably draft and standard. So, boring. How do I clean my grinder so it stops reeking of the devil's lettuce? Wow. Oh, you're ousting this, but you already turned it off with the with the revoki. Alright, well, that's fair, I guess. Oh, they're never attacking with this guy. Hmm. Good Ventum. Ventum? Yeah, Ventum if you got him. Well, which one though? Like neither one. It seems seems pretty bad oh, against yeah, either one of them. Oh yeah, two, three, two, right? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I'm just gonna chump block. I'll take three and hope we draw something good. They have three cards. One is a batter skull. Brickbeard, thanks so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. I'm the kind of MTG player who doesn't even know what you were talking about. That's what I mean. Like it's just not a. Th it's pretty good. <laughs> Oh man, I'm glad we put put this guy in the deck all of a sudden. Wow, that's good. Holy smokes. And we get to kill this so that next turn when we redraw our Brightling. Oof.
Wow. Yeah, we're saving anguish to making for the batter skull. That just seems safer. Also, if any of you guys were gifted a sub for uh for for this for this month from either like Tanos or Josh VS, it's only one dollar to resub for September, so don't don't let that don't let that good value go to waste. It's really appreciated. I described Shimoy above. Alright, hold on. Let me find it. Lucas Shimoy is like a blend of sweet, sour, spicy, cherry flavored. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Wow, apparently you win most slam massacre him and you just win the game. I guess that's a good card. That's a card that you wanna play in your little decks. Do you wanna board anything in? Do we care? Uh, I don't think. think so. I think our deck is actually very good. Bone Shredder. We have a lot of removal, which is nice. This is our removal package. Bone Shredder was a little awkward. Uh, only because they had artifacts. But I see what you're saying. But I think they still had a lot. Of, no, they we but they had also had pre Saint Captain, Isamaru, uh, Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, well, I guess it's like they have a lot. Of, they the the problem that Bone Shredder had was that we killed all their non artifact creatures, right? So I think it's still fine in the deck. This is also our whole of removal right here, <laughs> which is a pretty good amount. Plus, we have really powerful uh, Elspeth, Dragon Lord Jamoka, and Shieldred. This guy is also basically removal. Oh, and Abrupt Decay. I didn't even have Abrupt Decay over there. Elspeth is also kind of removal. Not for their deck, though, I don't think. But what if it was? Okay, but then yes. Then there you go. Gotcha. Did you? No. Huh. Not really. Yeah, I appreciate I'm glad you. I'm glad you admitted that, though. That's nice of you. Duress to get him. I was actually tempted to... Actually, Duress seems okay because we did see an oust as well. Are we going to get a Frank Slauson on the GT's World's Protest and the State of the... Oh my god, I literally... We literally... That just went over it right now. Um, Aceru, I'm actually going to make a video on it independently of this. And I'll be going over the points, so... Selena Gomez Prime, thank you so much. Really appreciate the resub. How you doing over there, man? Yeah, pretty good. I like. I gotta check on you every so often. Just make sure it's. What if we three zero with this deck? That'd be pretty gas, right? I mean, it's it's a good deck, Brent. They're good decks. They're good decks, Brent. And throwing three zeroing with a stip is like that's, nice. That's that's where you want to be. People are people are all commenting on my on the commander video, and they're like, "Commander is the best format. Fight me." This hand seems amazing. Commander is like a brewer's paradise. Like my literally only my literal only problem with Commander is that I feel like a lot of your choices don't matter. And I've said this before, this is my one problem with Commander is that I feel like you you can do a thing it, like any any given turn you can probably do a random thing and it might have the same effect as if you targeted someone to specifically. It's just you don't have a lot of power in your decisions. Does that make sense? You feel like that's fair? Kind of, but it, that's, that just kind of means your deck's not really suited for the format. Did they just attack with her? Do we decay? Yeah, get that thing off the board, man. I don't think you ever attack with Mother of Runes. Oh, Watsi communication is actually terrible. Every two years, you get a statement from Wizards about how they're going to improve communication and how they're sorry and they really want things to be better and like, you know, it's 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 one of their biggest concerns and it never really works out that way. I'm going to get another. Actually, it's got to be a swamp here. Because if we get an, if they end up wastelanding this, right? I'd rather have double black than double white for our deck. We do have a Cloud Goat Ranger for next turn, followed by a Bells and Lock, which seems pretty good. The oh. politics is the only thing I don't like in Commander. That's what I like about Commander. Mike was a politician in a former life. 
It's turn four, and this, like, white aggro deck hasn't played anything, and I don't really understand. Hey, sir, no worry, buddies. No no worry, buddies. No worries, buddy. That's what I meant. Did you see that rain that just happened? Like, it just it rained for, like, 13 seconds. It looked yeah. like it was going to rain, and then nothing actually happened. All right, now we need to get rid of this. Anguished on making right off the tippity top. That's not it. We could Wretched Confluence twice and draw a card and then attack for six. Which is actually not terrible. How do you feel about that? Seems good. I mean, because then they have to spend three to bounce it and then another five to equip it. And we still get to draw a card out of it, so it's basically free. I would like to play Bells and Lock here, but... Six damage is a lot. Plus it takes... I mean, I wouldn't, wouldn't have done it if it didn't take so much mana to reinvest in Batterskull. Like, it takes them another eight mana in two turns to really do anything with it. Well, that's a good card. Oh, Pro Demons is a thing. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good on this board. Oh, boy. We're having a good time, ladies and gentlemen. Don't manatize me. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Wow. Lucky, 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 lucky. Do we just keep one Kithian back just in case they have a random haste creature in the red deck? No, no. I don't care about that. You mean the no. white deck? The white deck, yeah, that's what I meant. Name one white creature with haste. Mono white. Doesn't matter. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this deck... We haven't lost a game yet with this with this stipulation deck. Woo! Good removal, good dudes. Casper, this is this is solid. I am a fan. Good times are being had. Your dad going for cigarettes? Is that is that hasty? Is that the hasty creature? Papa, can you hear me? I will play first. I like this hand too. All these hands seem good. It's just classic at will economy BS where your best ambassadors of the game are doing all the work at their own risk with negligent support. And I agree with you completely. And here's here's another here's one thing that really that, that keyed this into me. When we went to Seattle for Melissa's internship at Wizard of the Coast back four or five years ago, when we moved, there was no relocation assistance whatsoever. Which is funny because I've since heard, like, I got a, an offer from Bethesda and they had relocation assistance. I know Blizzard gives relocation assistance. All these other big game companies give you relocation assistance because they value your employment. And the reason I keep hearing that Wizards doesn't do this is because, well, you get to work on magic. And that's super cool. So, isn't that enough? And the answer is, like, no, not really. It's not. French snacks are worthless. I can find better than that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I don't think we're brutalitying here. Like I know wizards I know wizards is a company. Put so much value on the fact that you get to you get to play magic. That's what you're doing for a living. That they they can underpay you. That they can uh, not give you relocation assistance. You know, like they can do stuff like that because you're working at Wizards, and that's super cool. I'm actually tempted to just him here. Mm, I think I'd cultivate him next turn. I don't like that they have a. All right, fine. I don't like that they have blue mana up, but. We don't mind if they counter this. Like, it's not really that bad. That's fine. You know what's cooler than working for Magic for a living? Being able to support yourself. Yeah. This is Vendillion? Pestermite. Okay. This doesn't really do much. You got it. I'm probably killing this immediately, and then I'm I'm probably just doing this. I'm playing a land in case they daze us. 
Cast with two modes. Kill and this boy. You and you. You two. What are we discarding here? Just a swamp? Yeah, I think so. Lightning Bolt, Primal Command. And then they have Phantasmal Image, Deceiver Exarch. I don't care about Lightning Bolt. I'll take your Primal Command. But your hand is actually very, very good outside of that. Actually, it's kind of meh. Like, I don't care about Lightning Bolt. Phantasmal Image and Phyrexian Metamorph don't do anything on this board. However, when you get to... Oh, you also don't have a fourth land. That's pretty good for us. Keep up your Lightning Bolt. Wait, you untapped the land that... Interesting. Oh, you probably like Ancestral Vision. Okay, good. That was a, that was a nice draw. I really don't like Gonsi now that they have... Now that they have Phantasmal Image and Metamorph in hand. Can you him See what you hit? Yeah, I think we're going to ham him. Ham him. One, two... Image and Bolt. Let's get down to business. One, two, three, black. We'll get a black and one, two, three. We'll get a black and a white. I feel like we need to draw some, some good stuff here. All right, Tropical Island, so we know your hand. Yep, that's a good dude. Mask Worm one time. It's not bad. I'll just play this Gonti. Oof. Ooh, Eternal Witness seems good here. Do we get to play a land too? Yeah. Ooh. Is that better than Library though? Not sure. Uh, I like it better than Library just because if they if they can copy the uh, the Eternal Witness with their Metamorph. So, yeah, I'm going to get library here and just play the library. Yeah, I think this is better. I don't think it's E-Wit, just because they can copy the E-Wit and get back whatever they want, whereas library is a permanent source of card advantage for us. Sorry for the wall. Oh, uh, yeah, the most awful trend for employers of fun companies is that they treat their employees as charity. Like, you should be grateful to work here. That's super true. That's super, super true. Yeah. As opposed to employees who are trading their time and work for help. Yeah, I agree with you for 100%. And, like, a lot of times, like, Wizards is like, well, you got all these free cards, though. Isn't that kind of like a bonus? Well, no. No. And well, it's the same way, like... work selling them if I, you know... Right, but you can even when you work for that, when you work for Wizards. Also, it's the same oh, thing right. with judges. Yeah. Like, where judges were getting paid in, like, promos. So, judge promos. All right, here you go. And here's a box of Kaladesh. But I'm like, but you print this, so you're basically just printing money, right? Uh, I imagine Paul did not get any relocation assistance, unless they've changed their policy. But... You know, you get to work for magic. Yeah, we'll that's pay you pennies on the dollar. <laughs> but think of the perks. What do you copy with this guy, Gonti? It's got to be Gonti, right? Yeah, that's pretty good. This is what I was afraid of. Gonti's a powerful wizard. Michael, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, that's good. So your hand is still Metamorph, right? Mm -hmm. No, that was the Metamorph. metamorph yeah. Okay, so your hand is unknown. I would work for Wizards if they gave me a place out of those sweet new... I bet you could buy those Planeswalkers for the cost it would take for you to move to to Washington. And get a... And like... And no relocation assistance is rough because then you're required to like have first month's rent, last month's rent, and security deposit for the new place that you're that you're going to have to move into when you move to Seattle. You're going to have to move across the country like... When we moved to Seattle, it was like $10,000. It was like an expensive move. Okay, that's good because we get to kill this guy. Mask Worm. Dang it. One, two, three, four. Um, I definitely want to disfigure the Huntmaster. I also kind of want to keep a hero's downfall. But I also like Bitter Blossom, so what What do I do? Take eight. I don't want to take eight, though, if we're going to play Bitter Blossom, too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight mana. We can go three. We can do these three, three, four, five, six. I want to keep Downfall because of this, but I don't think we need to. I'm going to put this on top. I'm going to take four. And I'm going to play 
Bitter Blossom, keep up this and disfigure the the Huntmaster. What did we get off Gonti? Uh, we got the Sylvan Library, which so. literally just let us draw extra cards that turn. You can disfigure now? There's no point, really. It's not flipping. And they have no cards in hand, so. What are you doing? You have no cards in hand. Is there an onboard trick that I'm not seeing? Gaunty stuff. Oh, interesting. Murderous cut. Yeah, that's actually fine. If they thought you got was a murderous cut off that, that's great. Gaunty stuff? Yeah, you know, just Gaunty stuff. Bitter Blossom anguished on making a library. Go out on your terms. Yeah, I'll take all the damage. You can't stop me. Also, Shambling Vent blocks pretty much everything here. Except for Gaunty, which is fine if you just want to attack for two. I accept. I don't like them drawing three cards next turn, but... That's life. I mean, if they go Kiki-Jiki or Splinter Tune, we have the... Yeah, I'm definitely getting rid of that. We'd have to win in nine turns, though, and I don't think it's actually reasonable to start drawing extra cards, unfortunately. We do have a Shambling Vent, which is good. Oh, okay, that's probably pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we have to keep Heroes Downfall here. Is it worth attacking with the Shambling Vent? Probably not. Because they're going to draw four, so like their odds of actually killing us with this are reasonable. P good. So, But also next turn we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll have nine mana, so we can keep Downfall and Plager Mocha. I hope they tap out for Kiki Jiki. Everix, what's going on, buddy? Michael, can you hear me? All right, so one was a land. That's good to know. Here comes Kiki Jikis. What do you get here? Primal Command? No. Lightning Bolt? Sure. I guess we can actually kill this, and if they have, like... Oh, my God. I didn't know that was a thing you could do. I didn't think that worked either. I didn't think that worked. Holy smokes. Well... I want to vomit. I want to vomit. I'm just going to think. We know Pestamite's in the graveyard. I'm just going to kill this guy so I don't have to keep it up anymore. Um, because we really have to start getting back into the game. If they have a Kiki Jiki and they copy Dark Dwellers, it's rough. But they can only get Lightning Bolt back. So we would get to stay alive. Good lord. Five cards in hand. Oh, that's Belschnickel. This can't be countered. Play five. I, I hope the green, blue, red deck doesn't have an answer for this. Although when they treachery it, I am going to be sad. No treachery. No control magic. No sower of temptation. Although sower is the easiest to deal with. Choose blockers. All right, I'm just gonna. Two damage is pretty pretty brutal when you're at seven with a bitter blossom in play. So I'm just gonna keep on jumping and hope they don't have a way to make me sacrifice this guy. Okay, that's not a treachery, which is good for us because we can play Belschnickel here and gain five. Yikes. Oh god, I really don't want either of these because we know we're just gonna draw one off of the Belschnickel. I guess that's fine. Ooh. Wait, what happened to the land? 
Oh, it's not. It's a non-land, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, geez. Oh, wow. I had. I thought it was... Oh, boy. Yikes. Bell Schnickel, can you hear me? Oh, boy. <laughs> so we block here. We block here. We take four, five... We kill the, the land, the trash... Oh, God. I think we're dead. I think we just killed ourselves. I'm... I has a sad right now. If this didn't have haste, we have two blockers, so we can go block here, block here. We take... Yep, that'll do. All right. Wow. Belschnickel, why? Jeez. Thank you. The Gaming Champ. Thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. I think you're born in Ravages of War. Do you? Yeah. Interesting. No, that was just a joke. Oh, but I, I went to confirm and you said yeah. So you went real deep and I was like, oh, wow, that's weird. I was trying to think of could why... made you do it too. Yeah, you definitely could have. That was the first... Oh my god, you died doing what you love, drawing cards. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'm gonna submit. I think this deck is... I think our deck is fine. Oh my god, I forgot it was non-land. I just thought we were gonna draw the uh, the forest off of it. Holy schmokes, Belschnickel. I don't hate Mindbender. Uh, my only problem is that we don't have a ton of creatures to sacrifice to it. It could be an option. I don't know what we'd take out for it, though. Belschnickel, can you hear me? It's our worst hand in a while, and I actually still don't hate it because we have action. What do you think? It's really close. I'll try it. Like, I definitely don't think... We have two playable cards. One of them is a very, very, very strong enchantment, so... They also went to six. They're basically dead. Died doing what you love. That's Watsy's mission statement. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. He died doing what he loved, making magic cards. But couldn't you have just fed him and paid him a living wage? He died doing what he loved. You heard us. All right, I guess. Bitter Scrober turn two. This is a uh, a bitter bober dad. Mm -hmm. Oh no, blue. That's intriguing. Green or white or green white. A three drop. Okay, okay. Just pass it up. Pass, pass it up. Kerwood, did you miss the opening? Oh my god, you totally did. It was in this. It was on this stream though. Oh my god, it took us like twenty minutes. Kerr, dude, the amount you sent me was unbelievable. It was like eight pounds of things. What just happened? He remanded his own. Uh, what you call it? Charles agent. Oh, that's very strange. I guess that's good. I have no idea. Land. Oh, all right. Well. Cheap black spells making. Oh, we hit a Venser and a Pestermite. That's pretty good. Sorry, it's 5 a.m. Well, if you were here on time, it would have been earlier, so. That Bober meme will be great in October. Why? What happens in October? It's Bober October. Bob Bobtober? Octoberfest! <laughs> Oh my god. Sometimes I feel like the stream has gotten out of my control. I feel like it's uh it's actually taken on a life of its own and I don't actually understand how or what to do about it, so I guess I just kind of accept it, you know. Sober Scrober, can you hear me? Alright, we're gonna do one of these jobbies. Um Do we just do all three modes and just discard a bunch of junk? Could. Wait, what? No, I did all three modes. Collect. Oh, you can only do two. Why? There's a creature. Oh. There's a target. Choose target creature, you, and choose an opponent. All right, so we're going to get rid of Dryad Green Seeker, maybe. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely Dromoka? Yeah. And... I think Dryad Green Seeker. What about Brightling? It's double blue. It's double white. Sure. 
God, if they have like Spell Pierce. Oh, Primal Command. And your last card is Green Warden of Marasa. You have two mountains and a Green Warden. That is not an ideal hand, my my friend. We might just win this game off Bitter Blossom with this hand they have. It's okay. You can get it back with the Primal Command. Or with the Green Warden. Mountain, can you hear me? Any land? Oh, yes. We're so good at this game. Now the question is, do we play Dry Green Seeker to try to hit more lands, or do we play Vampire Nighthawk? No, put that pressure on, boy. Yeah, you're probably right. Vampire Nighthawk, can you hear me? Why do I keep saying this? It's because it was in Deadpool. It's uh, it's the it's the musical they watched in Deadpool with Barbara Streisand. Yentl? Is it Yentl? I think it's called Yentl. What are they getting back here? Prime Primal Command? P Command? Or do they just get back Pestermite because they've top decked Kiki Jiki? Don't catch you live. I mostly watch your YouTubes, but I try to send my Prime Summer right now. Thank you so much. Really, Chunk of Junk. Really appreciate it. And you've cleared our for a bit because you are you have a gold pig. So, Gold pigs. Do, 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 do. In the middle of our street. Gold pigs. Wow, we have six damage. They go to six. What do they get back? Primal Command? Sure. So they go to 13, and then they could search for a gentleman. So we have, they go to, they go to 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we have 8 power on board, so we can probably jump block here and not worry about it. What did they get back? Primal Command. Oh. Yeah, I thought they were going to put this on top for a second, but I think that's not, that's less relevant than just getting a creature you can. <laughs> yep. All right. White mana one time. So you know they have this guy and two other cards? Yeah, we'll block here. Really? It doesn't increase our clock, and five life is definitely worth saving. White. It's actually fine. Yeah, they're not going to have enough for both pieces of the combo. One, two, three, turn. four, five. Actually, they would. If they have both in hand, they would. Because they can go three for Deceiver Exarch, untap their land. One, two, three, four, five. I guess we should have dryaded first. Yeah, I mean, it might come down to that. But they would have had to top deck Deceiver Exarch in like two turns. Or they could just, they could actually Kiki G. No, nope, they, mm, yep, now they have enough. They just win. That sucks. If this is a land, if this is a white land... Okay, it wasn't a white land then. So actually, we would have been fine. They copy this guy. They get a Pestermite. Yep, that's pretty insane. <sighs> Dang. Like, they had to have this guy into Primal Command, into Kiki Jiki with Pestermite in the graveyard. Like, it literally had to have... They had to have all those things go right for them. While also drawing eight lands. Uh, I mean... Sure. That's really unfortunate. Cool. Well, either way, the stipulation worked pretty, pretty well. I am uh, quite fond of it. They just happen to get super lucky, I think. Um, having the, like, five perfect runners. That, not even runners, but, like, five perfect cards they need in a row to make sure that they... Uh, Kiki Jiki into into kill us. So, what can you do? Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Casper Dix, thank you so much for the stipulation. Really appreciate it. Hopefully, uh, you approve and hopefully it went well. I think that went uh, quite well. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Sign those like and subscribe buttons. Check me out on Patreon and Twitch. Links are in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time.